for Krima Media and Johannesburg, I'm Martin Joaquinho. Author Lani Fanfurian joins me in studio to discuss your new book, which explores the history of South Africa's large dams. Welcome, Lani. Thank you very much, Martin. Uh, Lani, what inspired you to write a book on the history of South Africa's large dams? Well, two main reasons, Martin. The one is that, you know, water has been very much thrust into the foreground of discussions lately. But we talk about everything. We talk about the water crisis. We talk about, you know, the state of our rivers being so poor. We talk about the poor state of our uh, water treatment plants. But we never mm -hmm. talk about dams. And yet we've got one of the most sophisticated water infrastructures in the, in the, in the world, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the one reason. The other reason was that a lot of the engineers that have built these structures on our aging. Many of them are in the 80s or 90s. And is a lot that of so? Yes, <laughs> which is frightening. And many of these stories have actually not been written down. Mm -hmm. So I started this project really to raise an awareness um, among greater members of the public about our dams and what a wonderful infrastructure they are and what benefit they are to us uh, as people. OK. And how long did it take you to put the book together? Um, I've been researching the book for four years. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's taken me four years to write. Mm -hmm. um, started in 2008. Okay. Now, will you outline an extensive history of water management in South Africa, even extending beyond, uh, you know, before the colonial period? Could you share with us some of uh, the more interesting things that you found out about that period? Well, I think the one thing that doing the research for the book taught me is that we've actually been manipulating water in this country for a lot longer than you think. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's this misconception generally that um, it was the European settlers that brought water technology to the country. Mm -hmm. And that is simply not true. We've been storing water and, you know, uh, moving it around for thousands of years mm -hmm. um, to uh, one example would be for uh, the side dams that are still being used today. It literally translates into sewing dam. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a technology that was taught to European settlers in the 17th century by indigenous cultures, and mm -hmm. it's still being used today. I see. Um, so that was the one big lesson that I learned. Okay. And what are some of the bigger dams in South Africa that you cover in your book? Uh, I cover all of the the big dams, mm -hmm. um, the biggest being the Harib Dam, of course, mm -hmm. um, at 108 meters tall. Okay. Um, then there is Pongala Poort, which is the second biggest, mm -hmm. uh, Starkfontein. Mm -hmm. um, those are the three biggest. There are also the two big dams that South Africans built mm -hmm. that are not in South Africa, and those Where are the are Katsi, those? And, Katsi and Muhali dams okay, in the city. And they are also included in the book. I see. Now, can you tell us briefly uh, the role that dam structures have played in the country's socio-economic development? Well, Martin, it's quite clear from doing the research of this book that we would have not been anywhere near economically developed without dams in this country. I mean, our very first dam was actually built, the modern, modern dam, mm -hmm. in 1660 by the Dutch settlers to yeah, provide right. water to the passing ships going towards the east. Mm -hmm. So we've, we have a very long history of constructing dams. Mm -hmm. And if you look at today, um, look at our richest province, Gauteng, for example, that imports water all the way from Lesotho dams. Mm -hmm. um, all of our industries, all of our power stations, mm -hmm. uh, all of our mines, all of our towns and cities are in one way or another dependent on dams. And today, 70% of our daily water use actually comes from dams yeah, in right. this country. Okay. You note that our dams have uh, fallen out of favor in South Africa, but you also emphasize you know, the role that they've played you know, in the development of the country. Mm -hmm. Can you share shed a bit more light on that? Okay. Uh, since the global environmental movement in the 70s, there's been this growing international resistance towards dams. Mm -hmm. um, and in South Africa, that resistance came really late. Mm -hmm. um, the first public resistance we see against dams only came in the late 80s, mm -hmm. when the Department of Water Affairs wanted to build a dam, another dam in the Palmit River system mm -hmm. to serve Cape Town. And actually that pressure uh, towards that dam resulted in the dam being instead built in the Berg River, as you know, the Berg River Dam. Mm -hmm. And these days, the people don't really want any more dams. But why is that? 
Sperms, just like any other human activity, have a huge impact on the surrounding uh, environment. Mm -hmm. Especially in South Africa, our rivers are naturally extremely variable between high and low flows. Mm -hmm. And so the ecosystem is really adapted towards that. What dams do is that they even out those flows. Okay. Um, and so the ecosystem changes completely in the I invertebrates see. and the life in the so it changes completely. However, any South African ecologist will tell you that without dams, we are nowhere in this country because of our water scarcity, mm -hmm. because of our variable climate. And so dams are extremely important to South Africans. Well, that was author Lani Van Furen discussing her book, In the Footsteps of Giants, Exploring the History of South Africa's Large Dams. I'm Martin Joaquin.